Hey guys, welcome back to Layout once again. Um, today we're going to talk about programming. So I know a lot of people have questions about how to consist locomotives and all that. So um, we got a few locomotives out here today. And what we're going to do today is really just talk about um, how to set up the consist. I'm doing quite a few videos on DCC and programming. I'm doing kind of like a, a mini series, I guess. So we're not going to talk about speed matching or anything else in this video. That'll be a separate video. I have all sorts of different uh, programming videos coming out. So anyway, today is just we're going to talk about the CVs involved in setting up a consist and trying to get the functions you want for that consist. So to set up our locomotive consist here, we're going to focus on three CVs or configuration variables. The first of those is CV19, and this will set the consist address. And this value will be the same for all three locomotives because that will tell the decoder um, under which uh, consist number or address number to respond to. Then CV21 and 22 are important because those control which functions are activated under the consist address. Um, and this will be a different value for each locomotive because, for example, if we turn on the headlight for the consist, uh, we don't want the middle and trailing unit to also have their headlight come on because uh, that's, that's unprototypical. So by setting these to different values, um, we can have different functions turn on for each locomotive under the same consist address. So first off, let's take a look at our consist here. Um, the lead unit there is going to be 3950, that's our KCS SD70 Mac. We have uh, BN9580, and then the trailing unit there is Norfolk Southern 7519. So the first thing to do here is establish our consist address. Um, and it really doesn't matter what this is, it just needs to be valued between 1 and 127. Um, so I'm going to pick 127 just for fun. So our consist address is going to be 127. Um, but you see here, for locomotives that are facing the opposite direction, like our trailing unit or the Norfolk Southern locomotive, uh, we need to add a value of 128. Um, so for those locomotives, the CV19 value can be anywhere from 129 to 255. So we take our consist address, which is 127, plus 128, and we're going to get 255 for the trailing unit. And this will be the same for, for the first two locomotives, the value will be 127, then that trailing unit, since it's the other way around, will be 255. Then for CV21, um, this will be different for the three locomotives. Um, first we're going to look at our trailing unit, or sorry, our leading unit, and that is uh, the KCS SD70 Mac there. And we're going to look down this line here and figure out which functions we want activated under the consist address. Since this is the lead unit, um, we're going to want the bell, which is F1. Uh, F2 is the horn, F3 is short horn, dynamic brakes, uh, these are accessory lighting here, and then this is the dimmer and mute function. So you know, under CV21 we want all of these functions activated, which means we're going to add up all these numbers, and when you do that, these are the numbers in red that you want to add up, we're going to get a value of uh, 255 as well for the lead unit. So for the KCS unit, CV21 will be 255. Now, for the Burlington Northern locomotive, since that's in the middle, um, we actually don't want any of these functions activated because uh, it also does not have sound. If the middle unit had sound, then I'd probably want the dynamic brake function on, in which case we'd program at a value of 8. But since it has no sound and we don't want any of the accessory lighting on, that's going to be a value of 0 for the BN unit. And then for our final unit, that is uh, the Norfolk Southern uh, Jeevo there, we're going to want... Um, since it does have sound, we want F4 on, which is our dynamic brake, as well as uh, the mute function, which is F8. So we're going to have um, these two functions on, and when you add that up, that's uh, a value of 136. Now, moving on to CV22, um, this is going to be pretty simple. There's not much to add up, and what we're mainly focused on here is the lighting. I don't really care about F9 through 12. If you program something into those uh, slots that are important to you, then you can add those values in. But um, for me, I'm really only concerned with the headlight. So when we turn the headlight on, we really want only the lead unit headlight to come on. Um, so for CV22 and the KCS unit, we want F0 in the forward direction on, so that equals a value of 1. Um, obviously, we don't want any, any lighting functions on for the middle unit, so that's a value of 0 again. And then for our tra trailing unit, if you wanted, you could program in the rear-facing headlight to turn on um, when you hit F0, but since we'll be coupled up to a train, I don't want that rear headlight on, so we're also going to program in a value of 0 for our final locomotive. 
You'll notice here, uh, I have programmed in all those CVs for the consist, and now I've selected 127, which if you remember is our consist address. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to talk through it now so we don't get distracted by the screen here. Um, so we have our locomotives behind us, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute them. So if I hit F8, you'll notice that all units mute, and that's because we programmed in um, that function to be controlled under consist address 127. So both the trailing and lead unit, which have sound, are now quiet. So we'll turn that back on, and then the dynamic brakes will come on for both those locomotives. And when I turn on the headlight and ditch lights, that only happens on our, uh, our leading unit right there and not any of the other locomotives. So I'm going to go ahead and pull forward a little bit here. Well, I think that's about it for this video. Um, hopefully that helped in some way for those of you who might be new to DCC or programming or anything. Um, I honestly haven't been doing that much advanced consisting or advanced programming, um, but this is really easy to get the hang of. It's just three CVs and you just got to do the simple calculations. Uh, it makes running the trains easier as you can just hit one function for like dynamic brakes or whatever and you know all the sounds turn on um, and that also makes it more front or more fun to run trains. Um, you know, you could also program or consist locomotives using kind of the DCC system's proprietary way of uh, doing things. Like on the NCE system, there's a consist function down here. You just hit set up, and then it asks you which locomotives you put their addresses in and which direction and all that. And what that's doing basically is just programming in CV19. Um, however, if you want uh, the locomotives to respond to functions under the consist address in a particular way, um, it's just easier to program CV21 and 22 separately. So this uh, is the more complicated way of doing things, but it's also universal. Um, so you can do this on, on any DCC system. Um, so anyway, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be doing some other programming videos. Uh, like right after this, I'm going to shoot some video on um, speed matching, which is important for consisting. And then I'm also going to do a video on um, realistic train handling by uh, programming load compensation and momentum and kind of where the sweet spot is there. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with that the last few days. It makes running the trains actually quite enjoyable. So anyway, look for those videos soon. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.